Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to catch up on how Nonfiction November has been going. I just kind of want to give a quick recap of what I've read so far. My TBR is still in flux and just reading what is calling to me truly. I wanted to mention a few books that I read right at the end of October that I mentioned in my TBR but that I didn't really read in November. One I mentioned in my last video in my nonfiction on booktube tag and that's The Only Flying in the Sky, an oral history of 9-11 which was really really great and I totally recommend it on audiobook. The next one that I finished was Know My Name by Chanel Miller which was another one that I was really excited about. I read this one, I didn't listen to it on audiobook. I ended up giving it four stars. I know in my video I kind of said like this is probably gonna be five stars but I felt like the last maybe 50 or 70 ish pages took away from her more personal story and it focused more on like the general me too and like cultural changes happening. Her strongest piece of writing is when it comes from the personal and not as much when it comes from like critiquing and looking at society in general though she must see connections between what happened to her and like what's happening in society now yeah in general i just didn't feel like those were as important to her full story and the last 70-ish pages dragged a little bit more. I also listened and finished The Day Before Nonfiction November from scratch, a memoir of Love Sicily and Finding Home by Tembi Law from the perspective of a woman who had just lost her husband and then reconnecting with her husband's family. She met her husband in Italy and they kind of had this whirlwind romance and nobody believed in their love and he moved to the United States with her and this is also coming from the perspective of Sicilian parents that don't want their son to be with a black American woman. I would definitely recommend this book to people who like listening to stories about grief and like overcoming grief, just the sadness that comes with all of that. Also if people are interested in like motherhood and adoption stories, this is a very interesting look at how they decided to adopt and why they chose who they chose. If you also like stories about food and culture, this has a lot of food in it. What I really most took away from it and loved from it is how they discussed the parents and the Sicilian family and customs. It reminded me so much of like my dad and the way my dad described his dad. It felt like the way that Sicilian people think and act was very much in line with how my dad talks about his family. Then I finished, and this one I have a copy of, Marriageology, The Art and Science of Staying Together by Belinda Luscombe. Um, it's this really tiny, cute little book. Side note, I want to know how publishers decide to create like tiny books versus like really big books. How does that get decided? I, I need to do some research on that. I listened to this one mostly on audiobook. I had originally started this as an ebook. I had got it from NetGalley when it first came out like in February or something. So a really long time ago I started this. I got maybe 15% of the way through and I just wasn't picking up my e-reader as much so I put it aside. I've come back to it now. I listen to it. I think that's the best way to listen to it. It's narrated by the author. She's got like this really light like humorous take on marriage and looking at certain things that you should think about when it comes to that um, and she calls them like the, the F's. Familiarity, fighting, finances, family, food fooling around and finding help. And she uses um, anecdotes from people, she uses research, she uses her personal opinions and like experiences. This comes from of course the perspective of a very heteronormative like white middle class woman. When I went into it I wasn't really expecting like a very critical analysis of like what marriage is truly like. I just took it more from like a memoir and like personal perspective from her. But I liked it. I definitely agreed with her in a lot of parts and like the way she sees her husband is a lot of the time how I see my fiance and I told them there's some parts in this that I want him to read. Yesterday I finished, which I've been really wanting to finish, Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrell. Overall really like this book and I think it is Although it's been kind of compared to She Said, I think they are completely different stories. The only thing that they really have in common is the fact that they were both trying to get the same story out of these sources. What the women had to say to both of them, Jodi Cantor and Megan Toey, and then what they had to say to Ronan Farrell were along the same lines because Weinstein had a pattern. What I really took away from this book and what I liked about this book is how it looked into the conspiracy to kill the story at NBC News. They fact-checked it, they went to legal counsel, all these people thought that it was fine for them to publish it. Still, he was told no and he had to take a story elsewhere. It also has some really interesting conversations about like intelligence being used 
by Weinstein and other like high-powered people to follow journalists and follow sources and I kind of understand like Rose McGowan's paranoia that she like talks about on Twitter all the time a little bit better now because sometimes you think like what what is she talking about but then you realize like how infiltrated Weinstein had like people in her life to keep tabs on like what she was thinking and talking about and that's like really sketchy. I also really enjoyed how Farrell talked about American Media Company and National Enquirer and like where this term comes from, catch and kill, is from how Dylan Howard, who was in charge of American Media Inc. and the National Enquirer, would catch stories and then keep them because of the relationships that they had with, you know, politicians like Donald Trump perhaps and other really important people in media and politics and actually kill these stories basically from going out because they were the only ones with the rights to kind of spread it after they signed deals with the sources that they were talking to. So it makes it like really really aggravating to think of like how many people have been silenced and how many people have been like victimized and, and told to be quiet and how their stories are just not out and we don't really truly know what all these powerful people have done behind closed doors and some of them run our country. So I really liked Catch and Kill. This morning I finished Tegan and Sarah's high school. This is the rock duo twin sister band talking about their experiences in high school and that includes like their family life and their relationships with their mom and dad and stepdad as well as their crushes and kind of starting to understand their sexuality more. The girlfriends that they had, a lot of partying and a lot of like drug like dropping acid situations that I didn't really know about them. I'm going to put this book down because it is just way too shiny. What what I really enjoyed about this book is seeing that new perspective about Tegan and Sarah. It's a band that I've been listening to since I was in high school. I ended up giving this book three stars mostly because I felt like it wasn't as introspective as I thought that it was going to be. They just kind of described like what happened. So it's very literal just what they went through and less more so like what those experiences in high school meant to them and like how they shaped them, how that led their path to them creating music. I really enjoyed like the last maybe a hundred-ish pages because it focused more on them finding a guitar, starting to play music, like recording their own cassette tapes, and then starting to play gigs and like winning competitions. And that to me was more like what I really wanted out of it. So liked it didn't love it and I'm kind of sad about it because I just wanted it to be like a really great memoir. I also just finished Adulthood is a Myth. This is the first Sarah Scribbles collection. I'm definitely gonna pick up the next one. This was just really light-hearted. Like a great thing to just clean my palette and start anew here and it just put a smile on my face and I saved a bunch of them because they're hilarious. And we'll see from this original stack what I pick up next. Maybe this next? So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.